Flyers are attempting to terminate the final year of Johansson's contract, uh, citing quote unquote material breach. Uh, this is again, this kind of came from the Flyers, significant failure to fulfill a contract's obligations, uh, which can undermine the contract's value and purpose. Johansson is an eight million dollar uh, contract split between Nashville and the Flyers, four million each. Uh, will come off the books entirely if it's improved. Johan, uh, Johansson and his uh, agency had a statement. Uh, Johansson has a severe hockey injury that requires extensive surgery, which has been scheduled. I call bullshit. Uh, <laughs> since being traded to Philadelphia, to the Philadelphia Flyers, Ryan has worked in good faith with the club, its medical staff, and authorized third-party physicians. I still call bullshit. The Flyers' attempt to terminate Ryan Johansson's contract uh, is disappointing. That's bullshit. Uh, we have been <laughs> in contact with the NHLPA and will defend and protect his rights. There's nothing to defend. The case is bullshit. All End right. of story. <laughs> no, I mean, look. Okay. Let me just understand this for a minute. So Johansson gets traded here in the Walker deal. And I remember I was on the phone with him and I sat there and I was like, we're figuring out, all right, Walker just got traded to Colorado. And we're like, all right, like what's going to happen here? He goes to me. He's like, it's probably going to be Johansson. I said, yeah, you're probably right. It's Johansson. Yeah. Then I said, that's actually not horrible. Then I thought about Tortorella. Everyone I think mm -hmm. on here knows what my, my two cents are about torts. Uh, secondly, what are they exactly? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> secondly, <laughs> secondly, uh, he had issues with him before and all that. So if Johansson he, again doesn't come to uh, doesn't come to Philly, doesn't report to Lehigh Valley, all that. Now suddenly, when this goes public, he has a, a quote unquote severe hockey injury that requires extensive surgery, which has been scheduled. Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. I mean, I think. I mean, right away, I've seen a lot of people compare this to the Ryan L situation and like rightfully so I guess in the sense of like they're guys that are, aren't playing hockey right now that are being paid a fuck ton of money Ryan Ellis at least appeared in a flyer yeah game. Ryan Ellis at least reported like and, and you saw those reports come out too saying that like he really didn't want to leave Nashville yeah. but he still comes over and he ends up playing yeah I mean granted he plays a total of like what five games before his career's four. over but yeah um, five points in four games that's it yeah five points in four games yeah he's What's like a top player? five flyer in point in point yeah game. Because he because yeah, he only yeah. played the four games. Flyers. Yeah, no, exactly. But like ultimately with Johansson, it's a guy who his career is the I think it's the definition of like a tale of two careers in, in one. Because you have a guy who he, he gets drafted fourth overall by Columbus, and I think it was 2010, and comes in and he was all right as a rookie. He didn't really, you know, he wasn't like the craziest impressive. He wasn't like a he hits, you know, hits his marks right out of the gate and turns into a perennial legit threat for like 50 points or anything like that. But he came in impressed yeah, and then eventually he hits 71 points. I think it was in 15 or 14, 15 with Columbus. Yeah, 82 games, 26 goals, 45 assists. Yeah. So a 71 point year in what was what is fourth year in hockey? One, two. Split and he split in the lockout year in the NHL and the NHL. Yeah. Um. So that's one, two, three. But it's it's four. Yeah, it's four. Yeah, yeah it's, it's four. full up. NHL season. He puts up seventy-one points. So that's yeah. that's Ryan a big jump Canadian? there. <laughs> that's the biggest <laughs> the biggest headline of this whole thing is that yeah. he's Canadian. He's from Canada? No way. I didn't know he was Canadian. Holy! I thought it was like Swedish or something. Like Joe Hansen? Joe Hansen's like a super. Usually player. that's like Johansson or yeah, something. Yeah, like, like that. Marcus like, Johansson. Like, yeah, I just figured we were all Americanizing it. No, no it's literally it's Joe, Hansen? It's Joe Hansen. Yeah. Oh, shit. You were saying. That goes to show how little I know about Marcus Johansson. Johansson? <laughs> Wait, Ryan, 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 Ryan Johansson and Marcus Ryan, Johansson. Ryan Johansson and Mar Maybe I'm getting them mixed up. Probably. Because I also, like, I, I completely forgot the first entire four years of his career. We were talking about this. In the yeah. So, I forgot that he was on the Blue Jets. I just remember him. Like, I thought he was drafted by the Reds. No. So, but that's that's the crazy part about him. And I wrote about it a little bit today. And, and I just did a quick write-up for the – once the news came out. Joe Hansen was drafted by Columbus, fourth overall. Comes in as a relatively impressive guy. He wasn't, like, you know, like I said, out of the gates, you know, like perennial – wasn't a Calder guy yeah. and then turns into like a legit 50, 60 point guy in his second year, but he was impressive for, you know, the circumstances. Then he comes in, puts up 71 points in his fourth full season in the NHL. And then immediately after Tortorella comes into Columbus, that doesn't work out too well. He's got like six goals and damn near 40 games. Yeah, he was in Columbus for Torts. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the whole beef with it is that he comes in, Tortorella comes into Columbus trying to fix the issues that they had. Johansson, any any sort of safety that he thought he had went right out the window as soon as Swartz goes in there. Scores only six goals in his first like 30 something games of that year. Gets traded. Oh my God. Gets traded months later for Seth Jones. I didn't pick, when we were talking about this earlier, I didn't pick that up. That's yeah. actually like, that's actually nuts. And now I, I see what you're saying. We're like, this yeah. is definitely just an issue of. It's it's such a like it's such a slippery slope. Yeah. He's like I'm 32. So, I'm a bet. I have X. However many games. Played. How many games played? Ryan? 905. I have 900 games played. I'm not yeah. a bet for this guy. No, exactly. Yeah. At, at this stage so, in his career, what's the point? At that 71 point season, 1450. Paul was just talking about. Over the next 10 years, he had 411 points. That's a 41. Oh my point, God. 41.1 average. Yeah. On a season. So it's a big over drop the next off. 10 years. It, it's Which a huge drop, fine, but it's not like right. But they have seventy points. Yeah, yeah. and just to yeah. keep in mind, like oh Brandon, he's on Columbus. They're not good at that yeah. time. He's probably playing first line minutes, power yeah. play, all that. But still, I and, mean, and, he had some good seasons, though. I mean, sixty-one yeah. points that, um, with Nashville too, like, and that was had, year they went to the he Cup had some final. Good years in Nashville. Uh, he had thirteen points in fourteen playoff games. Fourteen points in thirteen oh playoff he had games. Like three points in six. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm going to speak up for the microphone. He had 23 points in 63 games with the Avs last season. Yeah. 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 13 That's goals. Really For nice. a guy like him that can average 30 something assists at yeah, 50 assists, yeah. to only have 10 is fucking mind blowing. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And there's no reason why he shouldn't be playing here. Like, right. if, the, if there was a, a thing that was like, hey, when you get this guy, he's going to be injured. And that is probably what got the Flyers the first round pick for Sean Walker. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But for him to not come here and then not report and not play. And then now suddenly when the Flyers put this out publicly, like, hey, we're terminating yeah, now your contract. It's now it's suddenly you have this surgery and all this yeah. shit. Like, I mean, listen, I understand to a point. Like, And you see it in like everyday life, like with HIPAA and everything. Like it's not people's business to know what's going on with like sure. an injury or whatever. But at, in the scale of like a pro athlete, especially when you have a level of controversy already attached to your name with Torts as the coach – you kind of not that you owe anybody an explanation, but to be completely silent and not say a single word about the entire is also bullshit. Is yeah. ridiculous when you try to make the argument that you've been completely graceful to the organization and everything. Right. Since it would have been totally different if Johansson came here, had a presser, and said, "Listen, I'm hurt. I don't know when I'm going to come yeah. back." All that, like at least he Ryan said Ellis nothing. The media after his injury, yeah. yeah, and even before, if you guys remember the inductory uh, press conference of Ellis, first question, I think it was. I don't remember who it was. Already dealing with injury. Yeah. yeah, someone was like, "Are you completely healthy?" He was like, "I literally never had an injury last year." He was like, "It was my thumb." They thought it was a hip, and it was like, "Oh, cool, he's healthy." And then he came here, and it was like, "What the fuck?" You know what I mean? So yeah. like, it, it's and sometimes it's, it's so right. But that's I, I, that kind of shows the difference. That's the difference between a guy who is injured and wants to play for the Flyers. Character, dude. And, a, and when Ryan Ellis came here, he football. literally said, "This is the most excited he's been to ever play hockey." Yeah. Did, and you I mean, and you look at how good to, that to, roster that's is. That's all my biggest like, to be fair, though. History with the Flyers, Ryan, a healthy Ryan Ellis on the Flyers would have been sick. It would have been. Able to they they might. Have, they might have. What? We would have been able to trap Gautier. So yeah. what? No, that's well, good. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. good. We would have been higher. Well, not, not necessarily though, Gautier. because Gautier got you Drysdale. So. Well, in, I mean, okay. hindsight, okay. 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 for sure, I you essentially turned Ryan Ellis and the Jersey. It's not the worst yeah. thing in the world, for sure. But that 2022 wasn't a strong class either. So, like, if you would have gotten a worse pick, that guy probably wouldn't have been anything more than like a bottom sixer, which they already have so much of. I don't I mean, know. They were really it's bad. Two though. years out from 2022. I mean, yeah, you're right. It doesn't seem like, like it's a small, a strong draft class. But yeah. like. I, my point would literally just, hey, we wouldn't have been able to draft Cutter Gautier. We yeah. wouldn't have been no, I, 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 I get into what a trade. Right. Uh, I get what you mean. You would, and, yeah, you would just have the rotting corpse of Ryan Ellis yeah. on your team. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and, and, right. and then have to tap at LTIR for yeah. four fucking years in a row. Well, right. And that's part of the reason why they're so pissed off about this Joe Hansen situation is because they don't want to have to tap an LTIR. No. And they should. Right now, they're over the cap because right. of his contract. Yeah. And if he's not playing because he just simply doesn't want to and he's essentially faking an injury, that's what this whole situation is about. Yeah. He's arguing he's legitimately injured, has a surgery, and that they're like just violating the contract because they just want to clear the cap, which I will say in Johansson's defense for his management to come out and say that they have a legit surgery scheduled, that's something that you can physically prove is true mm -hmm. or not true. So I don't doubt that they actually have a procedure in place. It's just such a sketchy look after all that time of being yeah. completely silent. That like 
it's almost hard to give them the benefit of the doubt, especially going back. We were talking about this earlier off the record. Um, his situation in Colorado with all the core players, it comes out. Adrian Dater says that, you know, there was friction in the locker room. Joe Hansen and the core players weren't getting along. So he gets shipped out in the Walker deal. That's not going to be a good look either, because ultimately you have the Colorado situation not panning out. And then you have him coming to Philly and now there's an entire legal case. Like you're when you're getting the lawyers involved, that's when you know it's serious. And that's yeah. when you know that something just isn't so adding up. One quick thing, I do want to comment back on what he said earlier. I mean it's and it can't be true because this is from Kevin Kurtz. This is from March 13th, the day after the deadline. Um, per source, Johansson flew into Philly earlier this week, told the Flyers he has a hip injury. So not that they knew about it before he told them he's hurt. Okay. So and, and this also said he's getting some images done exam from uh, Phantom Doctors when he was supposed to get sent. Uh, I just I refuse to believe that it takes this long for a professional athlete yeah. for the Philadelphia Flyers yeah. to get this procedure done. Right. You know what I actually think it is. And then in August, yeah. come out and say when the team says publicly, oh, Sean I'm getting Couturier a surgery. Came back from the fucking dead to play for the Flyers. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. if Sean Couturier can come back from that, you remember and, Kevin Hayes having Cam actions too. too. Cam, Cam Atkinson, Atkinson too. Kevin Hayes. Kevin Hayes had like two procedures in one season just to yeah. come back. Joel Faraby had the slip disc thing. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. That, summer, like yeah. Jack Eichel and Faraby was back yeah. in like weeks. Jack Eichel yeah. like, on the fire. Faraby played Eichel. that whole season. He didn't yeah. miss the game. Yeah. yeah. That's Even Brink. Like, Brink got surgery Brink and came back and did the I refuse to believe that. Yeah. And this is in March, dude. This is March. He said, told the he told the Flyers he has a hip injury. Realistically, what I think it is. He said, oh, I don't want to play for Torx. I don't want to play for a team that's yeah. – well, I guess we were in a playoff position yeah. then. But a team that's not viewed as a playoff contender. Right. I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna get our way out of the out of this playing, but I still want to get paid. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've got an injury. And right. then I he, prob- he probably figured, fuck it. I'll tell them I'm hurt. I'm I'll go. Sure. It's the deadline. There's 20-something games left. I won't play. They'll terminate my contract and buy me out, and I'll sign with the team. I think- and say. That didn't fucking happen because the Flyers were probably like, fuck you. We're going to get some sort of settlement in this in the NHLPA and whatever third party that comes in involved. I think the lines are a little bit blurred. I think you guys are both kind of on the same track. But, like, ultimately, if we're really playing the speculation game, I think the most likely outcome is that Johansson genuinely was hurt in Colorado by the time he came here. But if he recognizes that Torts is the head coach and he can just sit at home and make money, he's not going to be as proactive about getting a procedure to fix whatever Mm -hmm. injury he has. So that way he can just collect the check. You know what I mean? Like he's not going to want to report the play under Tortorella. He's not going to want to play in the AHL at the age of 32 with like maybe two years left in his actual career. Apparently not enough in his eyes because he's not playing at all. So he he must think he's cooked. I don't know. That's the argument that he's making. He's essentially saying I'm too hurt. I can't even play anymore. I'm cooked. You have to pay me my money. And if that's the case. Please, Chris Pronger. Like, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, if, if that's the case, then, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it's probably a little bit of truth in his favor, but I think the Flyers definitely have a case on their hands, too. So, we'll see how it plays yeah. out. Uh, yeah. I I think they should just Chris Pronger and then move on. I love Chris Pronger. But, yeah. That's know. the thing, though. Why do you, like, financially, why would they want to do that? They already have that heading with Ellis. Yeah. They're already buying Pronger, that guy. Pronger was on the books of her. Was he? Pronger had – no, the, yeah, he was. Oh, shit, no he mind. was out in 12. They traded his contract in, in the summer going into 15. Oh, never mind. Fuck that. Fuck they, that. they got Sam Gagne from the Pronger deal. Flyers legend Sam Gagne. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do about it. It's it just the shitty situation that the Flyers have, again, found themselves in. Yeah. yeah. Well, hope the worst comes to him. Not like, not like, <laughs> that's, not like, not like, that's not like, not crazy. Not like, not like physically, but like that's contract crazy. wise. Like, I hope he just doesn't get paid, or they, or like the NHLPA is like All either right. you I hope or he the out of millions. That's <laughs> going to be the assumption yeah. that he's actually yeah. blowing this out of proportion and just yeah. refusing to play. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So so the, if he's legitimately hurt, though, then why wasn't he communicating that with the Flyers? They, like, a, well, a, why did it go for March? Yeah. 13th to fucking yeah. August 20th. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so to I say, hey, I have a hip injury. Or I hope whoever the governing body of this is says either you play or you don't get paid. And right. then we have to see his miserable ass in Lehigh for a whole season. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to report the Lehigh. Yeah. There's and no then, way. Him and Cole's up. There's no way. Yeah. 
that would be yeah, funny. Yeah, the, the Pronger deal, going back to that, I want to mention that. Um, that was June 27th of 15. They traded Grossman and Pronger um, for Gagne and a 2016 fourth. So it was a cap dump, and that's probably what they're going to have to do at some point moving on forward. Um, Briere's going to have to get them out of cap hell because, unfortunately, they're in well, it again. Well, is this the last year of the contract? The contract? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so just sit on it for a year. Right. But, again, the why, with why that, do they want to do that? that? Right now they're over the salary cap. Yeah. yeah. And well, but LT, you can use LTIR. You can use LTIR, but there's like – But he's saying – You can only tap into it so many ways. It's – there's – Because I, I think – I don't. is there a limit on the contract for I LTIR? don't know if there's a limit, but I know there's certain repercussions that – Come with LTIR. That's why teams don't really like to tap. I think into that, it. that's well, limited I mean, to and how much. So it, the, Vegas Vegas. Gold, the Vegas Gold yeah. Knights and Tampa Bay Lightning would like a word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the reason, the benefit to being under is I think it's something with for however long you're under, you start accruing that amount of cap to go over after the deadline. So the teams that are hypothetically like under by 20 million, which is impossible, but under by 20 million up until the deadline then could like potentially add 40 or say 30 million at the deadline yeah and then go from like like a whole other level so that's the advantage is you can then spend more when you're under LTIR if you're over you don't get any extra at mm-hmm. the deadline yeah so that's that's like the as far as yeah, I understand so it, it says the amount that a team may exceed the salary cap due to LTIR is commonly referred as the LTIR LTIR pool um if a team is cap compliant on opening day without using uh, LTIR or uses LTIR at any point during the season. The LTIR pool is the cap hit of the LTIR player, um, less the team's cap space when the player goes in LTIR. So if a player has a four million cap hit um, and the team has a hundred thousand of cap space, then it's the LTIR pool is three point nine. So while on LTIR, cap space is no longer occurred, meaning any portion of the LTIR pool not used cannot be used later. So they can't use that money later on. Um, when a player comes off, the team's annual cap it, cap it for that day must be under the cap. So when you take a guy off, you have to be under the cap to do that. So that's probably the problem is they're not going to be able to put Ellis and Johansson on. Yeah. That's like $10 million in cap. Yeah. So whenever they take those two off at the end of the year, they're still going to be fucking over because they have a bunch of other contracts and winners and everything else. And, I'm, and unfortunately, Ellis is going to be on the books till 2027, I believe. Really? I think it's 27. I wish cat friendly still existed. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Uh, well, Puckpedia. Caps yeah. friendly. Puckpedia is a good. Uh, Sorry, good caps friendly. Yeah, caps friendly. Yeah. No, I mean, I forgot. I'm, I'm no, that, sure I forgot. 20, that the 20, 26, 27. For a second. Yeah. They're kind of like off 26, of three years. They are. I, dude, I now dislike the. I didn't dislike the Capitals before. I now dislike the Capitals. Because, yeah. Yeah, that's fair. But speaking of players that. No, wait, that's 27, though. No? 26, 27. Yeah, 20, so, right, so his contract ends yeah. through 2027. 26, 27 is one of those. Yeah, oh so God. that's yeah. another three years with Ellis oh on the book. God. The only thing I will say, though, is it's a good thing they have the draft capital they have because if they absolutely need to, they can just attach a pick to them and trade them away somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, but they can't be doing that in the next couple of drafts. The reason, no, the reason they could do like that. A, if it's like a third. The reason they did that with Pronger sure. is because he sent it to fucking Arizona. Yeah. You can't do that anymore because Utah's now here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what else? Utah that. was supposed to, to be in 26, 27. Hmm. Mitch Goff coming over. Just figured I'd yeah. drop that. Yeah, Just for fun. a sense Give of time. Give Joe Hansen back to the Blue Jackets. What? Give Joe Hansen back to the Blue Jackets. They, yeah, right. they, uh, although now. Um, they could actually become the cap dump now. 